So welcome back to the show. I'm here with David Tansel, and he's the CEO of Integral in Germany. And uh, from their worldwide headquarters, <laughs> he's going to be demoing my to us. From my home office. Home office. <laughs> he's going to be telling us all about Fusion Reactor Cloud, which is their new version and has a lot of interesting new features uh, that lets you keep a lot more data and it's even i i'm almost thinking it's almost an ai but i know it's not really an ai but it, it actually only kind of keeps track of intelligent stuff as to potential problems and we'll, we'll go into whatever it does that's uh, new um i know it can also uh tie into some of the uh tools like uh slack and other things to with the alerts so welcome david Thank you. Welcome to you, too. So what exactly is uh, Fusion Reactor Cloud, just in a sentence or two? <laughs> just in a sentence or two. Okay, well, Fusion Reactor Cloud um, is a new software as a service that we're offering. Um, it's been available now um, since August of this year. We've actually been running it for about one and a half years actually, we had a closed beta where we had a number of uh, customers that showed interest in the cloud. They were participating in the beta, but we've been, um, we pushed it official, officially uh, along with Fusion Reactor 7, which was in August of this year. And what does cloud do? So basically you can think of cloud as extending Fusion Reactor on premise. So, if you take a cloud um, license, if if you, you purchase the cloud license, then you get Fusion Reactor on premise, just like you had before, uh, and you also get a Fusion Reactor cloud account. And mm. with that account, accounts, uh, you can create multiple users, and um, as Fusion Reactor runs, so as the on-premise version, as the agent runs and collects data, it will push data up to the cloud every minute. And we're looking at um, what we call interesting transactions, ITs. Um, so we're basically monitoring what's going on on your local server. Um, and we're looking for potential issues, whether it be errors or slow running requests. And we're taking that data and we're automatically pushing it up to the cloud. And what you've got then is um, you've got uh, essentially a lot of data retention. So mm -hmm. you've got up to 90 days worth of data. So mm -hmm. we offer two um, editions of cloud. We, we offer enterprise and ultimate. Ultimate's got 90 days um, data retention, and Enterprise has got 30 days. Okay, so that's quite a lot more than the week you might get with Fusion Reactor regular right. on your yeah. server. Yeah. And so the thing with, 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 the, with Fusion Reactor with the agent, just to just to sort of let people know about that, um, we store all the data that we capture, we store um, in memory. So everything's stored in logs as well. But the stuff that you see in Fusion Reactor in the graphs um, and the, the, the last transactions, we store um, 100 um, of the, the, the last transactions. That is configurable. You can increase it. But obviously, if you increase that, then um, you're basically you're cutting into your memory. So by default, we store up to 100 of the last requests. Um, and all that's stored in memory. But with the cloud, um, we may have, you know, across your 90 days, it can be thousands and thousands of requests which we're mm. uh, storing. Right, but by storing it in the cloud, it's not on your server. So right. it's not yeah. on the, the user's server, it's on the integral server. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. cool. And uh, just for folks who haven't used Fusion Reactor, it, it's basically a way if your cold fusion server's running slow or crashing to figure out what's going on or, or even automatically do th something yeah. about so, it. So, yeah. so, so fusion, that I, is that still the same in the cloud version? That's, it, that's still the same. So Fusion Reactor is an application performance monitor. Um, all monitors do two things. They capture metrics, so they measure and they alert. 
fusion reactors um, just the same. We capture a ton of metrics um, and based on those metrics, we can alert you. And um, what Fusion Reactor does differently is there's two areas. First area is we've got something called crash protection. So what that is, is when we recognize that your servers uh, having a hard time, maybe you're running out of memory or you've got a long running request, then you can configure Fusion Reactor to actually take action. And that action could be, if you take the long running request example, Let's say you've got a request that runs, uh, normally your average request runtime is um, two and a half seconds or less. And what you can say is if I get a request that runs for 10 seconds, then I want to automatically um, kill that request. And you can tell Fusion Reactor to do that and it will just go in and, and kill that request for you. And, and of course it will inform you as well. So you'll get an alert. Mm. Um, the other thing that we do that differentiates us is we've basically, we've looked at all the types of tools that developers would use to try and isolate issues in their developments or QA or test environments. And we're talking about tools like, uh, like a debugger, um, code performance profiler, um, a memory analyzer, so tools to, to enable you to, to look at the heap, um, thread analysis tools, um, and generally these types of tools wouldn't be used in a production environment. And what we've done, and this is really one of the key differentiators with, um, with Fusion Reactor, is that we've built all of these tools directly into the product. Um, we've made them um, safe to use in a production environment. And above all, um, they run uh, very, very quickly. So the impact on your performance environment is negligible. Mm. So you've got all this capability at your fingertips, um, you know, all the, the goodness that Fusion Reactor provides you anyway, with the, um, you know, the analysis, the JDBC, information about the database, um, information about transactions, the depth, the stack traces, the resource information. Plus, you've got all these uh, pretty amazing tools that let you really dig into um, to the details and, you know, even to the point where you can debug um, your application in production. So when you, if someone gets Fusion Reactor Cloud, they also get a copy of regular Fusion Reactor. Is that how it yeah, works? It's the same agent. So it's exactly okay. the same agent. So if you, so if you're using Fusion Reactor right now and you say, oh, you know, I, we want to go to the cloud, then what you'd get, we'd set you up with uh, a cloud trial account. You'll get a brand new cloud key. And all you do is take that key, insert it into your, um, uh, local uh, instance of Fusion Reactor, just like you would normally. And lo and behold, it'll start sending uh, data up to the cloud. And locally for you, nothing changes. So all the capability that you've got right now in Fusion Reactor is all exactly the same because it's the same agent. And that, that was built, you know, built by design to make it easier for people to say, okay, well, you know, I just want to I've got Fusion Reactor on premise, but actually, I'd like I'd like the cloud. Right, well, that's cool. And so, uh, you mentioned this is for Cold Fusion, but it also works with any other Java server any, as well, yeah, right? Any Java. And actually, what's sort of also interesting is um, we're already developing new agents now. So um, we've already got uh, a Node JS agent, and um, We've not released it yet, but um, we're working on that and we're already able to run that agent and send data up to the cloud. So, and this will be, a, obviously this will be a completely new agent. So, um, you know, the Java agent that we've got right now that people also use for cold fusion, um, that will stay the same. But if you were using Node.js, then we'd uh, supply you with uh, a different agent you'd include that agent just like you do um, with, uh, you know, with Cold Fusion or if you were deploying on uh, Java. So you'd have to modify your um, Java args. 
So that agent will be installed and then we'll just start pushing data up to the cloud. And we'll have, um, the cloud will basically auto detect. So it will recognize whether it's dealing with um, cold fusion or whether it's dealing with, you know, just a regular Tomcat um, server or a Node.js um, uh, mm -hmm. instance. Okay, so I, I understand you, you can keep a lot more data because it's being stored in the cloud and, and you've got, you're, you're tracking potential transactions that are, are a problem. Yeah. Um, is there any other reason why you, you went to the cloud? Um, oh, there's, there's a bunch of reasons. Um, one of the things that we, you know, that we want to do is to um, build more AI into the application. So, mm. you know, if you, if you think about monitoring, you know, what, why do people need monitors? They need monitors because um, they've, you know, they've, they've written some, some bad code. It's either forming poorly or there's some defect with it. Um, but even with the, you know, the, the information that we provide, uh, and this is the same for all uh, monitoring solutions, you know, there's still, sometimes people find it difficult to actually, um, you know, understand what's going on and um, pinpoint a problem. And where we're going, um, and in order to be able to do this, we had to, um, you know, we had to offer the cloud, is to offer um, more collaboration, uh, more uh, analysis, so analytics of the data, so that we can uh, essentially analyze it for you and say, okay, here's the problem. Um, but in order to do that, you need data to do that. So imagine, you know, if we were able to, um, you know, because we're, we're capturing now, we're capturing all this data, uh, and it literally is, we're already into billions of transactions per month that we're capturing mm. cloud. So having that data available and being able to uh, analyze it, you know, really opens up the door to be able to say, okay, well, you know, we've seen an issue here. You know, imagine if, um, you know, imagine if Adobe make a release, a new software release and there's some issue in it. And that issue we, we pick up and we pick it up very, very quickly. Um, we'd see that issue occurring across multiple uh, customers, you know, as people deployed that version of Cold Fusion, and we can just capture that and instantly warn people. Mm. So, the, you know, this version has been released and there's some problem in it because we've seen that problem occurring, um, you know, with other customers. So we could potentially, you know, preempt things and, um, you know, really it's, it's a lot of it, it's, um, and you said this before, it's sort of, it is AI. Um, and what we want to try and do is, you know, improve the lives of the customers. That's what we're all about. You know, make, make mm -hmm. your lives easier, make your lives better. And um, through using Fusion Reactor, you know, essentially um, get you to the root of your problems, your performance issues as quickly as possible. That's, mm -hmm. that's really what we're all about. So if I'm using Fusion React Cloud and all my data is going to your cloud server, it, is there a security issue here that my data gets, you know, is mixed up with other customers' data? Or? No, well, not mixed up with other customers. Um, and all the data, so the data is uh, held securely. It's transferred securely. And um, you can also obfuscate all of your data. So let's say... Um, you know, you've, let's say you're, you're um, storing some uh, customer record data uh, or a customer credit card or something like that. Then what you can do is um, you can configure Fusion Reactor to obfuscate your data so that when that data gets pushed up to the cloud, you don't see any credit card information. It's all basically, you just see question marks. Um, where the transactional fields are. And we can even take that further um, because you might say, oh, well, I've got some data and that data I would like to see because it's not sensitive, but this and this field, you know, the credit card field or the, I don't know, the date of birth field, 
um, that's going to be obfuscated. So we can actually, you know, lock it down to specific um, uh, variables, which you know, which which get uh, obfuscated. Okay, so the the in your the variables in your code, the values of those variables get stored, so you can help debug what's going well, on. Well, th th this this case would be uh, like in a in a SQL call. So mm. If, mm. you know, you've got you know, select star from table where uh, I don't know customer name equals Fred. Mm. Um, then you can ob obfuscate the um, you know customer name equals Fred. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, with, you know, we, we've, we've come across, uh, or if you think about this, uh, obviously there are, you know, a, a monitor is capturing a lot of information and it's a lot of in-depth information. You've got to, um, you know, make the call um, for yourself or for your company um, about whether that information is important enough for you to, you know, to store um, so that you can basically utilize that information to, um, you know, find, find errors, find performance issues or, you know, find problem cases. If you turn around as an organization and say, okay, well, all our information, it's too sensitive. Um, you know, we, we're, we're not going to push it or we're not going to um, uh, store that information outside of the company. Um, then maybe cloud's not for you. So mm. you, you've got to make that call, right? I mean, Every company's got to look at that, and we've, you know, we've talked to customers, and some of our customers, you know, categorically said, you know, it, the the cloud looks amazing, but um, we we can't use it. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're you know we're not able to to move to the cloud. And what we've been doing for many of those customers is um, they've chosen to use Fusion Analytics. So Fusion mm -hmm. Analytics. Uh, also gives very, very in-depth analysis and all of the data which is stored on Fusion Analytics would be stored locally. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, you'd, you'd have a separate server for that and you know, push data um, directly to that server. Um, we've got a REST interface between Fusion Reactor and Fusion Analytics. And uh, you can set that up. It uses uh, Microsoft SQL Server um, for its database, and um, you know then everything's kept internally. So um, you know you, you you know if if you had issues with pushing information to the cloud, then uh, as an alternative, you could take Fusion Analytics. Mm. So do, if you're okay with the cloud, does this basically replace Fusion Analytics or? Um, I'd say it, it depends what you're looking for. Fusion Analytics, there's really a lot of, um, there's a lot of different reports. There's, um, you've got essentially unlimited data storage because uh, the only restriction that you've got is, is your own disk space. So if you've got a big enough database um, and you know, a ton of disk space, then you're not limited to 90 days. And we've got customers uh, who are running FA, um, you know, that they've got months and months and months or, or years worth of data just because mm. they can do, you know, they can, they can capture it and mm -hmm. they can save it. And mm. uh, Fusion Analytics will let you drill into that data and, uh, you know, analyze it across time. Mm -hmm. There are, um, you know, there, there are some, um, there's definitely some overlap in the feature set that we've got in Fusion Analytics and Fusion Reactor Cloud, but I'd say the future is uh, is certainly in Fusion Reactor Cloud, and our ability, you know, our ability to um, to modify it and to deploy it um, is really, you know, a, a big advantage um, over a, a product that we're just, you know, we're sort of uh, releasing. You asked earlier about, you know, when will Cloud 2 come out? That There won't be a Cloud 2. It's basically, it's Cloud and it's just evolving all the time. You know, it's we're literally releasing it every single day. Mm. So with Fusion Reactor on-premise, I mean, there we're making, you know, we've got the, the major releases and we've got the point releases. 
um, and that that's going to continue. But with the cloud, it's I mean we've not called it cloud 1.0. Uh, mm. It's just cloud, and uh, like I said, it's really evolving uh, all the time. Mm. So maybe now would be a good time to to do a demo of some of the cool stuff in Fusion Reactor I'd, Cloud. I'd, I'd love to. Yeah, and um, I will talk people through who are listening to this in audio as to what you're doing. Okay, well, um, I, I can share a screen, right? So yeah, I'll, share the yeah. screen for the people watching in video, which you can find on YouTube, our YouTube channel. And, and um, can you see now? I see the thing. It says, "Welcome back, David." And then it's got well, lots of you. data on how many servers you have, and alerts, and applications, notifications. And the right. Can, can I can I switch my video off here because I'm going to because it's getting really dark. Um, and you're you're so small in the video. I wouldn't worry about it. So R really, because I, yeah. I was going to. Uh, it's okay. So yeah, turn the light on. That's that's fine. Okay, so I've got the light on. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's take a look at what we're seeing here. So here um, we can see an overview of all the servers which I've currently got active. Um, we can see things like um, whether there's been any alerts. So I can see I've got a couple of warnings. If I mouse over that, I can see um, which particular warnings came up. I can see whether there are any errors. Um, I can see what my slowest request was here. So I've had some requests that ran for 75.958 seconds. So obviously I need to take a look at that. Uh, I can also see from an agent perspective um, how many outdated servers I've got. So by outdated servers, these are servers which I'm monitoring, which don't have the latest version of uh, Fusion Reactor installed on them. So I can see I've got some running um, 6, 626, and I've got some machines running 7.1. I can also see down at the bottom, um, there's three, three cubes down at the bottom. These are actually uh, quick links. So if I've got, let's say I've got, I don't know, 50 servers, but three of them are particularly troublesome, then I could just add direct links to those servers or direct links to specific applications on those servers um, so that I can jump straight from here into uh, into one of those applications. So for example, if I click uh, on the Spring app here, then that essentially takes me directly into um, the Spring test application. Mm. It's almost like you're uh, the teacher at the front of the class and you, you've told the naughty pupils they have to sit in the desks at the front so you can keep an eye on them. <laughs> exactly, yes, that's exactly it. So if I go, I'm gonna, just going to go back up to the um, overview here and uh, I'll just drill in, I'll just click on my online servers. And if I click on my online servers, um, I can see here uh, all these servers are currently online. If I click on a specific group, then I see I've just got one server which is currently online. This is my Cold Fusion server here. And if I take that off, I should see all five servers. And this Cold Fusion server is not actually doing that much at the moment, um, but I'll, I'll fire it up in a second. And then, then we're seeing graphs of how much CPU usage and memory, and I can't right. quite read that, re, re, how many requests are going through. Yeah, so um, the, the then, idea here is that you can, this is sort of like the, the dashboard in, uh, in, in Fusion Reactor. Mm -hmm. So you can get sort of an overview on the dashboard of what's going on. Um, if I drill into one of these servers, this is a Jetty server. So I've got, um, uh, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's four, four servers here. And um, if I click on one of these, then basically it gives me um, all the details. I can see I've just had another server that's just come online, my demo instance. Uh, I'll actually, I'll take that one just to, to show you that. Um, if I click on the 
so yeah, what you're seeing here is an overview of which version of the agent I've got, which operating system I'm running. Um, then I can see all the Java um, details. So which version of Java, what my uh, Java args are. If I click into um, graph, so here you can see this is sort of similar to the web metrics view in Fusion Reactor. Mm. But what I can do here, so I'm looking at a profile, this profile is my web server, um, and I can create custom profiles. So I might have uh, a number of metrics that I'm particularly interested in. So I could create a custom, um, uh, a custom profile for that. And what I can also do here is I can uh, extend these. So let's say, you know, I'd like to see um, some information about the garbage collector, then I can just add that information directly into these graphs. And as I go through the different, um, you know, as I click on the other servers which are available here, uh, it's going to show me exactly, you know, the the same graphs which I've selected. So that's good. That's quite useful. What we can also do, if I um, go back up to the top, so you can see right at the top it says last 30 minutes. If I go into here, um, we've got a time picker, so I can say, okay, I'd like to see, for example, show me the last hour. Um, or what we can also do is uh, we've got a natural language interface and different to Fusion Reactor, if, if I hit the um, keyboard interface, so I click, I just clicked on um, T for time here, I can say, um, show me today around, um, let's say four, Um, PM and if I do that so this is basically this has gone back to round about 4 p.m. today mm -hmm. um, and you can see that from the from the time here so it's no longer showing uh, the last 30 minutes which it was before um, so that's that's quite an interesting um, feature and what we can also do here is uh, on these views, we can also sync points. So with the sync points, if I take a specific points in time, then through syncing, I can get that. So let's say we've got some spike or, you know, um, we've got some specific, um, some long running request or something, then you can just pick that point on one of the graphs and it will synchronize that point across each graph that you're looking at. So mm. also quite a useful feature. So that way you, you can see when that spike happened it, in CPU, for example, that you can see what exactly what the memory was and exactly. how many requests. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if I go, oh no, transactions here, let me find a different server. So if I go back into online, let's see if I've got something in this Jetty server. Okay, so here I've got a number of transactions. So when you click on the transactions, um, this is going to show me all the transactions which is which have currently been run. And as you can see here, these ones actually have been uh, obfuscated. So um, when you look at insert question mark into basket, so the question mark, comma question mark that you can see there in Fusion Shop, um, the details have, have been obfuscated. So we can't see, you know, which exactly which products was um, selected here. Um, and if I click on, if I click on more details, so if I click on the uh, I over at the right, then I can also see um, transaction details in just the same way that we would do in Fusion Reactor. So this okay. is all, all the same information here 
So, um, so we can see for that transaction exactly what memory was there and how long yes, it took to run exactly, and what the yeah. SQL queries were. And, exactly. Yeah. Everything um, that you can see in, um, in Fusion Reactor and you can also, um, I can just focus in on um, transactions which included a, a SQL request. And if I go drill into one of those, then um, I see the, uh, the actual SQL up here at the top. Mm -hmm. So I'm not seeing the other details. Actually, I just wondered why the JDBC is grayed out, but I think that's because the data has been obfuscated. Mm. Um, that was the reason for that. We can also see if any profiles were run. Um, so profiles are, are available in Fusion Reactor Ultimate, and I'm not sure whether there are any. Okay, so in this particular case, there are no profiles. Uh, and can you can you search transactions? Like, could I say I, I want to see all the transactions that ran slower than two seconds? Or yes, you could you could do that. But you do that in if I go back to the overview, and um, I take so let me to take a look here. At which servers? Okay, if I go into, if I take demo instance and then I go into applications and I, these are the applications which are currently running and then I drill into one of those. So here you can basically, you can see um, all the different uh, transactions which um, have run and um, this is not this is not available yet, but you will be able to search. For example, here you can um, th these are ordered uh, based on on time. So these are showing all the uh, all the all the requests um, ordered by time. And for example, if I go into here and um, take a different metric type, I can also say, for example, just show me the slowest ones. And then it will just focus in and um, show me all the all the slowest transactions. And that's great. Yeah. If I go and I'm just going to say last thirty minutes here, and um, if I take one of these transactions and uh, drill into it, so in this case, this is a slow transaction, and this one does have some JDBC. So again, you've, you can see more information in this particular um, request. It's got some header information. Um, you can see the JDBC. So this would be just the, exactly the same as you'd see it in Fusion Reactor. And this information, um, although we're not obfuscating the data, so that's why um, it's available here. And in this case, there's been an error. And this is also quite interesting. So here you can see um, the errors. Uh, this is the uh, stack trace which is being shown. And if I just scroll down, what um, you may not have seen before is um, the fact that we can actually decompile information or we can decompile um, classes and methods on the fly. So if I take um, if I take uh, this get hibernate type call and decompile that, and uh, actually I took the class there, so this is going to take a while, but well, it was, it was still it was fairly quick. But you can see using through the cloud interface, we're able to essentially take a class uh, or a method and uh, instantly decompile that. And what you may also notice is um, we've got this theme switcher up here. And the theme switcher is so that uh, I can take the code and if I'm used to using a specific theme or a specific tool, um, like Eclipse, for example, which is what I've turned it to now, or if I wanted a solarized dark theme, then I could just click that and it would instantly change.
So that's also quite quite a nice feature to be able to do that. Yeah. So that's that's changing the colors, highlighting of the code. So you to whatever way you're used to reading code. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. But most uh, importantly, you can easily find the, the transactions that were really slow, so you can do something about them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, exactly right. And here you can see um, we've got um, different metrics available. So we've got time, which is um, how much time these requests run, uh, what the average time was, uh, what the slowest was, throughput, so how many times uh, this was called. And this particular example here, this is a Spring application. So Spring is a framework. Um, but this would work just, just really just the same um, with a, a cold fusion framework um, like cold box or framework one, for example. Um, you'd see in that particular case, you'd see the transactions or commands which make up that particular um, that particular framework. So I'm not sure if people have, have, are aware of that with Fusion Reactor, but we'll actually will automatically um, detect the framework that you're using, or if you've written your own framework, which is sometimes the case in Cold Fusion, then um, you can actually configure Fusion Reactor to um, uh, you can define the syntax that you've got of that particular framework so that um, we can basically through that syntax definition we can pick up the transaction names mm. yeah so this one's cool. also interesting here you can see um uh the the average and you can see that updating um, so there on the graph we've got a line that indicates the average uh time taken but then it also shows this particular request compared to that Exactly, yeah. So you can see what what you're looking for here is um, not, not too many big deltas. So you can see that there was a bit of a spike here. And uh, I think actually if I... Uh, just let me see if we do time. And I think I've got an example of this. So yesterday um, around three and pm now it's kind of cool that it it knows what you're talking about there it actually prompted you yeah yeah it's we interpret it and, um, yeah that's the that's the let's say the ai the start of the ai that we can do things like that and as well with the with the uh, keyboard shortcuts um that's also pretty cool so here I, I, I knew I was testing something yesterday. So uh, in this particular case, um, you can see that this request was having some issues. It was up and down, um, but then uh, around yeah, 15, 24 yesterday, things averaged out and things returned back to normal. So, you know, if, if you know that, okay, you know, we had a problem, you know, when was it? Was it yesterday? I think it was in the afternoon. You know, maybe around three. Um, you can just type that in, and uh, we'll instantly find that point in time for you, and uh, show you that data. So, yeah, that's. Uh, Does it have a? I mean, if you don't know exactly when the problem was, can you find? You know, well, you, you can always say, you know, if if you go back across time and say, okay, you know, I want to look over the last three days, okay. um, then. You know, for the last three days, um, I want to see, and you can see I've, I've got sort of, um, I've not got this, this, I'm running a VM here, so I've not got continuous data all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I can go and say, okay, just, you know, pinpoint me the errors um, that have occurred, you know, across the, the last, um, last three days. Oh, and so we can see the errors came in various spikes for probably yeah. when someone released some code that yeah had a so i've actually i've got i've got a little example here um i've got now you mentioned vms there will this work with if cold fusion is running under docker or yes oh yeah of course yeah so what i i didn't really talk about that yet the the licensing um so one of the 
I'd say it's not a limitation because you can use Fusion React and we do have a lot of customers who are using um, Fusion React uh, with Docker containers. Um, in fact, just while I'm, we're on the video, uh, I should say Brad Wood did a, a, a really amazing video on how to use um, Fusion Reactor with Docker Swarm um, using Command Box. Um, and it was literally, it was bringing servers up and down and then pushing the data from those servers directly into Fusion Reactor Cloud. And so that was, that was a really great video that he did. Um, but one of the things, um, one of the, let's say, challenges is if you've got, um, let's say you've gone um, containerized with your application and you're just bringing servers up sort of on demand. So you, you might have, um, you know, in a cluster, you might have, say, three machines in that cluster. But, um, you know, if you've got a peak um, activity period, then those three clusters might, or those three servers might go up to um, six servers. And for that case, with the licensing, we offer two types of licensing. So we can basically do reservations, just like, you know, think AWS. Um, so you can reserve um, servers, just like you do today with Fusion Reactor on premise. You say, you know, I've, I've got um, three machines that I'd like to um, license, but with the cloud, you can also do on demand. So if you ramp up a server um, and you're using Fusion Reactor Cloud, then that server will automatically start monitoring and it may only be up for you know, a few minutes. And mm. during those few minutes, we would monitor it and then we'd only charge you for the few minutes that um, that, that server was actually up and it was monitoring. So you don't have That's, to pay for a whole month. No, you don't have to pay for a whole month. So if you've got servers that are uh, active and switched on for the whole month, then obviously it's better to um, do the reservations and um, sort of say, okay, well, you know, I've got, these are my main servers, these are up all the time. But if you've got a dynamic environment, then you, you could also say, okay, well, um, you know, I'm still going to use Fusion Reactor. I want it on the cloud, and I'll just let those ones uh, build dynamically, basically do that. So uh, what I was just going to show you, I've got um, an error here. This is a little test application um, that I've got. And if I go back, um, I should be able to see here that I've got um, alerting demo instance. Okay, just let me go back into applications. And I'm going to take my test application here just to show you sort of the, uh, the capability of what we can do. And I've got um, for this, let me see, this cold, yeah, it's on this cold fusion app. So I've got, um, I've got a divide by zero error here. And now the, uh, these different time taken things are color coded by which. So you can see the transactions here. So if, if I took, if I just selected uh, divide by zero, mm -hmm. then basically the, the color coding is if you've got multiple um, uh, elements or multiple transactions. But now I've said I'm only interested in this divide by zero error. Okay. So it looks like this, this guy come up uh, a number of times during the day. So um, let's, let's investigate it. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to click on the details and um, I can see that this was, uh, this was run locally. It's divide by zero dot CFM. It returned a 500 status code. Um, and sorry, my monitor was just going to switch itself off then for some reason. Um, I can also see header information and I can also see the errors. So it tells me that I've got a divide by zero error. And again, I can see the, uh, the complete stack trace here. And um, what I can also do, which I showed you before, is I can also decompile that. So if I click on 
the run page here. This is going to decompile. And you can see the, the name of the, where it says the class at the top. This is actually um, where it says CF divide 2D by 2D0 um, 2E CFM. This is actually this is the name of the uh, CF file. And it's, I know it looks a bit weird, but um, that's, the, that's the actual name of the CF file. And again, right. you can see here. Um, so that's been decompiled, it's right? Got, yeah, so uh, you've got Java okay. here. So oh, let's okay. take a look now. So, so okay. that's cool. Uh, so all this code has been uh, generated by Fusion Reactor. Yeah, so, so this has been decompiled. So you've got the decompiled Java here that you can see. And again, we can do the thing with the switch theme to uh, take a look at the code. But let's just say we've got a, um, we've got a, oh, just a sec. And can we bump the font size up on all this stuff a bit? Um, we can. I'm think. just thinking of people trying to see this uh, YouTube later, and it's okay. so teeny tiny that I don't. Th I think YouTube has a a limit on. Yeah. Um, you probably have who's, one of those mega enormous who, monitors. That is that, um, does that look a lot bigger? No. <laughs> no. Okay. But we'll get there. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. zooming. Yes. That's much better. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to take a look. So we've got this. So what we were seeing before. So we've, we've, we've had some mirrors, some divide by zero. So just let's uh, take a look at that and see how we can figure out what that problem um, is. I mean, divide by zero, it's pretty, probably pretty obvious, but let's take a look in the code. So we just decompiled um, the code, and this is, this is called Fusion, this is a CFM file, and we got the Java. So if we go into Fusion Reactor now and say, okay, I'd like to look um, at my error history, I can see these were the divide by zero errors that I've got. And if I click here on error, and uh, again, Fusion Reactor tells us this was a divide by zero error. And uh, again, it shows me the, uh, the stack trace. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a breakpoint. And if I just click on the source code file, Fusion Reactor will automatically set a breakpoint at that, at that point in the code. So it knows where the code broke. It knows that it's at line three. And um, I'm going to set a fire count. So the fire count is, this is telling Fusion Reactor, um, how often do you want this breakpoint to fire? So in this case, I'm only going to um, fire it one time. I'm going to pause the thread and I'm going to pause it for 60 seconds. So I'm going to give myself 60 seconds in order to intercept this thread um, if this breakpoint fires. And then I click Confirm. And you can see now I've got a breakpoint here. This is It says fire one time and fired zero times. If I now do that divide by zero again, watch what happens. So. Let's say we've got some error, and that error was, was causing um, a divide by zero. You can see um, the browser spinning here. And if I go into Fusion Reactor and click on the bug, then that shows me this exact thread. So Fusion Reactor has now intercepted that thread. And you can see it's um, I've got this timeout, 32, 31. It's counting down. So I'd given myself 60 seconds to intercept this. If I click on the debug button, then Fusion Reactor has taken me inside the debugger, inside Fusion Reactor, inside your production environment. And it's now actually showing the CF code. So you can tell the debugger where is your source code. And if you've got access to that, Fusion Reactor will go get your source code. It will map that to where this particular error occurred. 
And it's actually highlighting the line in the code where this divide by zero took place. And this so, is all happening through your browser. It's all not through like. The browser. So nothing else. I didn't have to install Eclipse or anything else to get this to work. Uh, it's all done through the browser. I mean, this is the amazing thing with this. Um, you know, you don't actually, you don't need anything else. All you need is Fusion Reactor and um, it will do everything for you. So that's what I was saying right at the start with these low level tools like the debugger, the profiler, uh, the heap analyzer. Um, these are all available directly through Fusion Reactor. And you can even, um, you know, we can, we can see all the variables here. So all the, all the scope variables that are available um, we can see them all. So if I open up variables, I can see I've got a variable here called y. So I'd set y is equal to zero. So if I set y equal to two, and then I resume here, and I can resume up at the top if I hit the green resume button, then that should run through to completion. And if I go back up here, I can see now this this guy worked so um x is equal to one divided by two so x is equal to 0 0.5 so all, we all the while you were in that debugger the actual page itself wasn't fully returned to the browser correct window. so in that case for that one individual user everyone yes. else who was hitting the page they're not halted as well Absolutely, yeah, that's exactly correct. So for the other people, I mean, it could be that, um, you know, everybody else who hit that page also got a divide by zero. And if we run that again, what will happen? We'd expect it to break because we only told Fusion Reactor to halt one time. So that's really, and that's that capability, we've actually applied for uh, a patent. Um, for that capability because that enables us um, to control the debugger in, um, in a production environment. So there's a couple of issues just sort of on, on a side note, why would you not use a production, a, a debugger in production? There's two main reasons. The first reason is performance. So a debugger would put the JVM into debug mode and there's also um, sort of a debug transport protocol that's set up between the machine that you're debugging from and the target machine. We don't have any of that. We're inside the JVM and we've coded directly at the debugger through something called uh, JVM TI through the tools interface. Um, we don't put the engine into debug mode at all. So when the debugger is not running, the overhead is zero. Um, and uh, the overhead when the debugger is running is really tiny. I mean, it's, mm. it's certainly it's less than 1% um, uh, performance hit to use this. That so is cool. And this could be a, you could have this across a whole cluster of servers or? Yeah, you could, in, if Fusion Reactor is installed, then uh, that capability would be available on every single server. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really, really very, very cool. And if we go back in just to show you that, you know, it's not all fake, you can see now um, this uh, breakpoint fired, we told it to fire one time, it's fired one time. If I go and edit this, and um, if I set that to three now, and then do a confirm, then it goes back, fire three times, fire zero. And if, again, if I run that, then you can see the, uh, the browser spinning. And again, we've got the, um, the bug. If I click on the bug, then that's my thread. And again, I can go in and, and debug it. And mm. if I let this one come to, if I don't change the variable, if I just let this resume, then we'll get the error. So, mm -hmm. All right, cool. So Pretty great, cool for, yeah, great for figuring out stuff that's going on in your production app. Right, absolutely, yeah. Um, okay, and we can see here in the alerts. I've actually I've got this uh, divide by zero error. 
So the cloud also detected that I've got this particular error. So I set up an alert for this. And um, as that uh, alert or as that error occurred, um, the alerting engine basically fired off and um, you know alerted me through the through the user interface. And of course, you can also get um, uh, an alert, like I mentioned right at the start. If we go into the alerting section, um, and these are all the um, different alerts which are coming up. And then if I click on the checks, these are the checks which I've got. And this one here, the first one is, uh, this is the, the check that I put in. So if you can read that. Um, no, it's all so teeny tiny. Can't also read teeny, so let, let me see if I can, um, if I can just increase the size of that. That's much bit. better, yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is for, I was checking for Earth status 500. Okay. And um, this was my check. So I was checking um, for application, actually it's not application or accounts, it should be uh, application request status 500. And I've got a warning threshold of one, um, one 500 error and um, a error threshold of three. So if I get three of these errors within a time period of 15 minutes, then it's gonna fire uh, an error alert. And um, you can also see we've got the time period which this, um, this alert should run in, and we've also got a cooldown period. So very often what you're trying to do with an alerting system is not get overwhelmed with alerts um, because that's also, you know, that then you just get sort of false positives. So um, we've built in a cool down mechanism. And what, what does that mean? If it so has five minutes cool, cool down. down mechanism is it, what that will do is if you've got an alert for something and then you set a cool down mechanism, that alert will not fire for that cool down period. So, okay. so it wouldn't happens. fire if it, if you get that alert, you wouldn't get another one for five minutes in this case, exactly, or, or whatever number you put in there, or however long exactly, however long you, right. you say. And um, we can see here the the subscriptions. This looks a little large now because I've um, I've increased the size of it, um, but you can see the subscriptions are basically that those are telling. Fusion Reactor Cloud, how um, we want to be alerted. So um, you can see these are the integrations that we've got here. So email, HipChats, um, a webhook, Ops Genie, PagerDuty, um, Slack, Victor Ops. And uh, in this particular case, I set up an alert to alert the CEO via my HipChat channel. And if I go into hip chats, just a sec. And I'll just bring that up for you. So um, yeah, this was um, the alert. So I've got this, where is it now? Oh yeah, this was the one, there's another one come in as well. This is the divide by zero error. It, it's not showing your hip chat screen. So. Oh, it's not. Ah, okay. Sorry. Um, just let me see if I can. Um, well, that's cool. That uh, you see it now. Now I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. now so, so that's my that's my hip chat, and you can see this was the alert that came in five twenty two. Um, so I'd see this directly. So as soon as that alert fired, uh, you know you don't need to watch the application all the time. It will just integrate into whichever tools you're you're using. Mm. That's great. Yeah. And so that, we should be back. And that also gives you a, an external record of what alerts have occurred. 
Yes. So here you can see all the alerts. Um, and like I said before, um, you know, here you've got a, a detailed breakdown. These are all the errors, or I can show any alert which has come up, or I can show um, just warnings, for example. And um, if I go back to the overview screen, then I can also see um, instantly whether I've got errors or warnings. Um, that's all shown here. Yeah, right. it's great uh, dashboard there showing you what's going on with your Cold Fusion service. Right, yeah. And again, that's back to back to the uh, the graph. So that's that's pretty much um, Fusion Reactor Cloud. I think that's uh, shown the the main capabilities. We've probably run out of time now. I don't know whether we've bored everybody to death, but we've been going for for longer than an hour. Um, yes. No, I haven't been bored to death, so I don't think any listeners have been bored to death. I hope not. If, hope if not. you're concerned about your uh, servers crashing or uh, being slow, then it's actually pretty fascinating to be able to see all this um, detail that you can get and control. Yeah, it is um, really pretty amazing, actually. Um, what we can do now and uh, like I said before you know we, we're just building more and more of capability into um, into well into fusion reactor and into the cloud so um, stay tuned so for the future there's going to be more collaboration more artificial intelligence coming into the products uh, and a bunch more features as well so we've got a ton of stuff planned for um, for Fusion Reactor and Fusion Reactor Cloud. That's great. So let's just stop screen sharing, come back. There we go. And let's just talk about what Fusion oh, Reactor. So that's, that's very, yes. very dark. Yes. Well, it's dark in Germany right now. It's dark, it's, yes. Because it's 30 at night. There yeah. you go. It's pitch um, black. So, let, what exactly did you know? What exactly does it cost to use Fusion Reactor Cloud? Okay, so um, it starts at uh, ninety nine dollars a month um, for enterprise, and it's one hundred and forty nine dollars a month for Fusion Reactor Ultimate. But don't forget that includes um, Fusion Reactor on premise. So. Um, everything you've got with uh, FR on premise, you'll get with the Fusion Reactor Cloud license. So you don't need to buy, you know, you don't need don't need to buy two products. If you get cloud, then you get everything um, which is on premise also. Okay, so that's ninety nine dollars a month uh, per server that you're you're yeah. monitoring, or you yeah. have have that metered version if you're using a Docker cluster where you need to pop servers in and out. Right, and in, in those cases, if you, so let's say you've got, um, you've got a Docker instance or a number of Docker instances, then uh, like I said before, as those come online, um, we would basically bill on demand and we're billing based on minutes. So minutes is the um, lowest denominator. So you'd only pay for each minute that you'd actually um, use Fusion Reactor for if, if you're doing the on-demand billing. And, and roughly what point does it make sense to switch from on-demand to reservation? Um, well, we don't charge that much extra for um, on-demand. So mm. it's 10% uh, it's more, I think. Oh, okay. If you, yeah, but if you've got, um, you know, if you know that you've got a server, and I think a lot, certainly a lot of the cold fusion um, community, you know, they've got a server, that server's on all the time. And um, for those customers, it's, you know, basically it's better just to do a reservation. Um, and then if they do, you know, if they did bring another server up, so that, for example, they might bring, I don't know, they might bring a, a staging server up just mm -hmm. well. Um, their applications being deployed where they want to test on then and that's maybe only up for a couple of days then in that case um, you know they could just put it on on demand they don't need to pay for the full month and they just pay for the couple of days that they were using the staging server mm. 
and so anyone can do that if you have an, if, an account with yeah. Inspiral, so you if just... you've got a if you've got a cloud account mm -hmm. uh, right now if you go onto the website um, there's a, a page just for a fusion reactor cloud mm -hmm. um, you'd need to contact sales so if you'd like to um, trial it um, just get in touch with the sales team through sales at fusion dash reactor.com and we'll create you a trial account and then off you go and you've got two weeks um, just like you do with uh, fusion reactor you get two mm. weeks of ultimate and um, then afterwards you can decide whether you want to continue um, if you add your credit card into the application into fusion reactor cloud then it'll just start start billing and that's it and then you get a every month that says hey, here's how many minutes you used. Yeah, exactly. If you've used, if you've done on demand, it, it'll either tell you um, uh, what your reservations were. So you might have two or three servers on uh, reservation, which are reserved. Mm -hmm. And then it'll tell you, plus you've got so many minutes of on demand usage. That's great. All right. So, um, Let's just switch gears for a moment. Um, how did uh, CF Camp go for Integral? I think Charlie was there for you. Yeah, right? Charlie was there. Yeah, it was really good. It was great. We we love going to CF Camp. Um, it was it was really good. Uh, you know, we had a lot of customer interaction. Uh, it's always great to meet um, meet customers, and and generally there's. You know, we, we don't get it so often that there's people coming who've not heard of Fusion Reactor. Um, so, you know, it's we're not necessarily going uh, and talking to new customers, although we do sometimes. Um, but it's really nice to, you know, to see customers, meet them, hear how they're using Fusion Reactor, um, and how they're benefiting from it. That's That's always very rewarding for us. And what do you know? What the next conference you guys are going to is? Yeah. Next, next conference that we're going to, that I'm going to, is Dev Nexus in Atlanta. So Ooh. Dev Nexus is a Java conference, and um, I think that's on the 23rd of Feb, 23rd to the 25th, I think, or 24th. Um, and that's in Atlanta at the Congress Center in Atlanta. Mm. And it's actually, it's the second largest Java conference in the States. Mm. So uh, we sponsored it last year and it was really great. Um, uh, you know, there we, you know, we didn't really know anybody. We're um, sort of a, a newbie in the, the global Java monitoring space, uh, mm. everybody, sort of knows us in, in the CF world, but in the Java world, we're uh, sort of the new kids on the block. But um, what was really refreshing for us and really interesting was the feedback we got for the, for the low level capability, um, you know, for the debugger and the profiler, it was, the feedback was amazing. Mm. So made a lot of uh, contacts there and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that next That's year. Great. Well, you know, I'm glad you support uh, so many conferences around the world, both for Cold Fusion and Java. Um, so, you know, I know sometimes people think Cold Fusion's, you know, not not the world's healthiest language. You know, maybe it's dying or something. It's, it's not true. It's not true. Yeah, it's, I don't. It's alive and kicking. Yes. Yeah. So, what would it take for it to be even more alive in uh, the coming year? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, we've sort of, we've talked about this in the past as well. I think it's all, uh, you know, a lot of it's down to, to what Adobe does and how Adobe promotes the language. And uh, it's actually, it was quite interesting. They also, uh, I don't know if they're going this coming year, but they also sponsored DevNexus next year. Mm. So they were there on a stand and um, talking to, you know, Java developers about the uh, capabilities that you've got with Cold Fusion, and why it's still, you know, a great language. Um, so well, it compiles into Java, so you know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, 
and if you want to call pieces of Java from it, it's very easy to do. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, Adobe they're talking about um, or they're they're planning for the next major release of CF, which is Ether um, CF twenty eighteen. So assuming that's going to come out next year. And uh, some interesting features in there, and uh, yeah, stay I, tuned. I'd, I'd hope CF twenty eighteen comes out in twenty eighteen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a, li a little strange if it didn't. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast, uh, David. Okay. And if people want to find you online, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, the best way to do that is generally, well, we've got, if they go onto the website, fusion-reactor.com, um, from there, they can basically, uh, contact us either by telephone or contact us by email. Um, they can also interact through the, we've got Google groups, we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook accounts. Uh, everything's basically linked from the um, from Fusion Reactor's homepage. So, yeah, please feel free if you've got any questions, want to learn more about the cloud, or want to try it out. Um, please feel free to to get in touch, and and everything's accessible through um, our website, fusion-reactor.com. Fabulous. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, as ever. It's always been great and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.